Hey everyone, I have been getting a lot of comments asking me to create videos on using GSAP with Next.js. To be honest, I haven't used Next.js much myself till this point, but it seems like not many people have covered it on YouTube yet. So I'm planning to get my hands on it and make some videos as I learn. To kick things off, I thought we would try something a bit simple, making a full screen navigation using the app router and GSAP. We'll use the newest GSAP hook, use GSAP, which is the replacement of use effect or use layout effect hooks to handle the timeline animations. I'm new to mixing GSAP with Next.js, so bear with me if I make some mistakes. My plan is to learn and share as I go, so we can figure it out together. I'll show you step by step how to build this overlay menu. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you are new here and if you find this guide helpful. Let's not delay any further and jump straight into it. We'll kick things off by setting up a new Next.js app using the create next app CLI. Now I'm not a fan of writing TypeScript so we will skip it for this project. Also we won't be needing Tailwind. Of course we will need the app router. That's all we need to get started. Let's open the project in VS Code. I'll start by removing some of the boilerplate, including style sheets and the page.js files, since we won't need that for this project. After cleaning up, we'll get the project up and running by running npm run dev command. The first thing we need to do is to set up our pages. Next.js uses the app router. I'll start by updating the homepage with some placeholder content to get us going. Next, I'll create folders for each page we need inside the app directly, naming them based on the path's name we want to access them with. For instance, I'll make a folder named about and within it create a page.js file. This setup allows us to access the about page through the slash about URL. I'll follow this process to create three more pages named work, lab and contact. With this structure, you can see that accessing these pages is as simple as navigating to slash folder name in the URL. Let's add the core element of our project, the menu. I am going to create a new folder named components where we will keep our UI components. Within this folder, I'll add another folder called menu. Inside the menu folder, I'll create a file named menu.js which will be a standard functional component. To add it into our app, we'll import it into the layout.js file and render it right before the page content. Before we dive into our actual menu content, it's important to note that by default, Next.js components are server-side components. To utilize hooks like use effect and use ref, we need to define our components as a client-side component. We'll start by importing the link component from Next.js, which extends the standard HTML anchor element. Then I'll add an array of objects with each object containing a path and a label for our links. We'll iterate over this array to render our links. Next, we need to set up a ref for the container to which we'll apply GSAP animations on its child elements. We'll also need a piece of state to manage the navigation's open or closed states. We'll initialize this state as false, indicating that the menu will be closed when the page first loads. Following that, I'll introduce a function named toggle menu. This function will be invoked whenever we want to open or close the menu, effectively toggling our navigation state. Let's lay out the structure for our menu, which we'll refer to as the container and link it to the ref we set up earlier. First off, we will have a menu bar that houses the logo and toggle button. This button will be responsible for opening the menu. Next up is the menu overlay, which consists of four main elements, the menu bar and three columns. 
The menu bar within the overlay will feature the same items as before including the logo but this time with a close option instead of open. For the close icon column, we will utilize an HTML symbol code to represent the close icon. The menu copy section will be divided into two parts, one for the navigation links and another for some additional text at the bottom. To populate the links, we'll iterate over the menu links array and assign appropriate classes we can later use for the animation. The menu info section will also be split into two, one part for the social links and the other for address. Finally, in a corner, we will place some placeholder text. Feel free to replace this with a link to a video or anything else you would like. In the final step, we will add on-click listener to both the open and close buttons as well as to the navigation links. These listeners will invoke the toggle menu function. The idea is to alter the state of the menu whenever a user clicks on any of these elements, ensuring the menu opens or closes as intended. Let's move on to adding some generic styles to our page. I'll speed through this part because there is nothing too fancy happening here. Essentially, I am applying a background color and a background image to the body along with some basic styling for the links and paragraph text. Additionally, I'll style the header, positioning it to the center and use media queries to ensure our layout is responsive across different screen sizes. Let's focus on styling our menu now. Firstly, we'll give a fixed position to both the menu bar and the overlay to ensure they remain visible as the user scrolls. They will span the entire viewport width and have some padding. We'll use flex display to organize the elements in a column format. For visibility, we'll define colors for the menu bar items to ensure they are visible. The overlay will be also fixed, covering the full viewport with some padding and a distinct background color. A higher Z index will keep it above the other content and we will use flex display for the structure. Inside the overlay, there are three columns. I'll set a specific flex values for each to achieve the desired layout. The close icon will be made larger and given a stroke in the same color as the background to create a thinner appearance. For the menu links, we aim for the width to match the content. We'll use a clip mask to allow for animation. This involves moving the link holder which wraps the link by giving it a relative position. I'll also add specific styling for the menu links. Finally, I'll add common layout styles to the content at the bottom and include media queries for responsiveness. Now here comes the most important step which is hiding the overlay with a clip path. We'll animate this clip path's values with GSAP when the menu is clicked as a reveal animation. With the styling in place, we are ready to proceed to adding GSAP animations. To begin, let's install the GSAP packages which include the latest use GSAP hook. After installation, I'll import both GSAP and use GSAP hook from these packages. We'll then create a new ref for managing our timeline animation, which will be crucial for playing the animation as the toggle state changes. Next, let's utilize the use GSAP hook. While defining a scope is optional, it helps ensure that all GSAP selector text within the use GSAP hook are limited to the descendants of our main container. The next step involves pushing the links down on the y-axis to keep them hidden behind the clip mask when the menu is closed. Then we will take the timeline ref and set up our GSAP animations. Starting with the menu overlay, we'll adjust its clip path to create a reveal animation. Feel free to experiment with the duration and easing to achieve the desired effect. After the menu is revealed, we want to reset the position of the menu links to zero, creating an effect where they appear to slide up from the bottom. 
will introduce a stagger to ensure the links don't animate all at once but instead slide up with a slight delay between each link. I'll even add a negative delay to start the animation before the previous clip path animation finishes. This setup is completed using the USG zap hook. Now to trigger this animation whenever the is menu open state changes we will use a use effect hook that reacts to the updates in this state. If the state is true we'll play the timeline animation we defined earlier. If it turns to false we reverse the animation. And there you have it. I hope this tutorial gave you a good introduction to using GSAP with Next.js for creating animations. See you in the next video.